Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I am discussing about the pillars of Islamic medical ethics. The first pillar, fitra, refers to the innate nature of human beings, encompassing the good and the bad qualities across different cultures, both past and present. Humanity has common views on certain issues which can be attributed to human nature. In every person there is an innate intuitions that can guide him or her to right or wrong in at least the basic morals. Without having to consult any religious belief or laws, it is a known fact that killing innocent human beings is an abominable act. Yani ki ye Islamic pillars hain. Baaz ukat kuch log masum bachon ko, masum insano ko maar dete hain. Ye bhot bada jo hai wo guna hai. The second pillar is akla, reasons, in black. This is God used to think critically and distinguish right from wrong. Allah Ta'ala ne aapko akal diya hai sahi aur ghalat ko samjhane ka. God endowed humanity with the ability to use reasons to differentiate between right or wrong and to discern the proper course of fact those who refuse to use their minds and follow their egotistic desires and blind themselves with self-importance follow their indistinct and hedonistic desires and deviate from the true path, becoming unable to minimally distinguish right from wrong to be sure even if they know the truth of the matter. They are inclined to follow their carnal desires and lust for material ends and tap over whatever remains of their conscience in Islam. God tells people that reason is that what she proves them from the behavior of animals and is used to keep impulses at bay should be their arise. The final pillar is way the re revelations and guidance of God carried by his prophet to the people. The oneness of God is the doctrine that states that there is one God, a singular divine being. In Islamic belief, revelations are inspirations of God's word delivered by his chosen individuals known as messenger prophet. It is traditionally thought that God sends these prophets to people who carry revelations that are used to drag their lives. Historically, the first prophet was Adam and the last one was Muhammad, peace be upon him. To truly understand Islamic traditions, one must realize that this is a means of guidance towards the true origin of humanity and the final return to God. All schools in the Sunni, majority sects of Muslim Sharia Islamic law are de dedicated to the study of how way guides the first two pillars and protects everyone from corruption. We also focuses on the possibility of how to restore the masses to the way they existed before in their prime or unaltered form. Islamic medical ethics also upholds the four principles of biomedical ethics proposed by Bio, Champ and Chir Childress, according to his approach, the four general principles of biomedical ethics are respect for autonomy, beneficent, non-maleficent, and justice. There is different emphasis, however, on the individual uh, principles compared with the classical understanding of them in the Western bioethics. Need for medical ethics. Medical ethics is becoming an important part of medical curriculum today. The clinical years of medical students' education are an ideal time for students to learn, practice and develop ethical thinking and behavior. Doctors' ethical issues are usually seen in their communication with patients and about limited health care resources attempted to use in the most cost-effective way. The ethical issues arise for more frequently than most younger doctors would have anticipated when they were a medical student during an every day of a doctor. There may be no ethical dilemma, dilemma at all about 
genetic genetic testing cloning or end of life care however they are exposed to seeing patients misinformed about the purpose of the procedure breaking bad news at times to their patients maintain confidentiality or keep proper relationship with their colleagues and other health care providers